Hello everyone, Dr. Siddiqui here. Today we're going to be talking about COVID-19. COVID-19, also known as SARS coronavirus 2, is 80 to 90 percent genetically similar to the SARS virus that was seen in 2003. SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. In February of 2003, the outbreak lasted about four months. However, the virus was rapidly contained, and within those four months, over a thousand people ended up dead and 29 countries were infected worldwide. And pandemic was averted as flights were suspended and the spread was mitigated. Let's talk about the symptoms of COVID-19. This includes upper respiratory symptoms including cough, runny nose, headache, sore throat, fever, dizziness, and other symptoms that may be atypical for coronavirus. Recent reports show that other individuals are experiencing symptoms including a lack or loss of smell. There also have been reports of individuals with COVID-19 experiencing GI symptoms, including diarrhea. According to the CDC, people who are at the highest risk for severe Ill illness includes older adults and people of any age with serious comorbidities. Now, these individuals include um, elderly, meaning patients aged 65 or older, people who are living in nursing facilities or long-term facilities, and other um, individuals with comorbid or high-risk conditions, including chronic lung disease or C uh, COPD or asthma. Um, uh, there are individuals who have serious heart conditions, uh, such as uh, coronary artery disease or congestive heart failure, as well as immunocompromised individuals, um, such as uh, cancer patients who are on chemo or radiation. Um, other individuals that are high risk include uh, severe obesity, um, individuals with a BMI uh, greater than 40, as well as patients with uh, high blood pressure or hypertension, and diabetes. So let's take a look at what happens in your body when you are exposed to the coronavirus. The coronavirus hijacks your cells and basically starts making it into a virus-making machine. As your cells get damaged and die, your body triggers an immune response. And that's why you have these symptoms of headache, runny nose, fever, chills, cough, dizziness, sore throat. Now, your body's temperature increases, which creates a more hostile environment for the virus, making it hard for it for the virus to replicate. And you may feel weak, fatigued, as your immune system fights the virus, and even your bones may start to hurt as you make more white blood cells to fight the infection. White blood cells activate a variety of chemicals that causes leaking of fluid into your lungs, and hence individuals experience shortness of breath or difficulty breathing. Now, the combination of the cellular destruction by the virus and the fluid-filled lungs interrupts the transportation of oxygen into the bloodstream, leading to low oxygen levels or hypoxia. As the virus continues to grow and the cells continue to die, in desperate attempt to save your body, your immune system goes into overdrive. Now, killing these healthy lung tissue that is basically uh, becoming scar tissue or fibrosis. Now the lung's protective lining is gone as the epithelial cells die and the alveoli, which are the tiny air sacs, now can become infected by bacteria that aren't usually a big problem. As patients get pneumonia, um, respiration becomes hard or fails and these patients end up needing to be on a ventilator to survive. Your immune system has fought at a full capacity to make millions of antiviral weapons and as thousands of bacteria multiply, the immune system is overwhelmed. Bacteria enters the bloodstream, which we call bacteremia, and leading to sepsis, eventually septic shock, and overrunning the body, and eventually death happens. So what is the answer? How can we avoid the spread of this 
contagious virus. The key is prevention. First of all, hand washing is key. Why is hand washing important? Remember, soap is a powerful tool. The coronavirus is encased with a basically a layer of fat or lipid layer, and soap breaks that fat apart and leaves it unable to infect you. Other ways of preventing the coronavirus spread is physical distance, avoidance of large crowds, as well as sterilizing surfaces and not touching your eyes, face, mouth, or nose. So let's talk about the transmission of the virus. How is one individual able to transmit the virus? There are three modes of transmission for the COVID-19 virus. Number one is aerosol. What does this mean? This means sneezing, coughing, or even talking uh, closely can spread the virus. Um, the second mode of transmission is via fomite, meaning uh, objects. Uh, countertops, doorknobs, or anything that may have been touched by an individual who uh, has been exposed to the coronavirus may spread it to others. Um, so you may not have to come in direct contact with a uh, sick individual. Um, you may be able to contract the virus by simply touching uh, surfaces. So it's very important to disinfect surfaces and continue to wash your hands. Last mode of transmission is fecal oral. What that means is that individuals who test positive for COVID-19 um, sh are shown to have the coronavirus in their stools or in their feces. So it's so important to wash your hands after using the restroom because you can pass the virus via the fecal oral route. The number of cases reported in the United States is continuing to increase at a very rapid rate. It is very important to stop the spread of this disease. At this moment, there have been over 136,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 and over 2,400 deaths. The only way we can prevent this from getting out of control is to continue hand hygiene, to continue to disinfect surfaces, and to stay away from others, to stay away from large crowds to continue self-isolation and to continue to stop the spread of this highly infectious agent. Thank you for tuning in. Please stay tuned for more updates.